So welcome to um, what I'm calling Insights from the Color Dojo uh, Visual Arts and Education Podcast. Um, I've uh, been been asked quite a bit uh, about the process over the years and the process of focusing on recording content has always felt um, in a way a distraction from the process itself. Uh, so over the past year, I've been focused on just finding ways to authentically share the, the, the process. And one of the best ways was just uh, um, wearing a, a GoPro chest mount and like recording, you know, the first person perspective of, uh, of, of kind of what it's like uh, for me. As, as I'm working. So as we embark on this journey together of uh, talking about art and talking about the process, um, the thought behind this is just to share the thoughts that uh, uh, may be happening in real time about process, tools, and materials, um, color selection, just art, subject matter, all sorts of stuff. So uh, as we dive in, um, I guess, uh, let's start with, um, you know, just, just chatting about subject matter. So I've used a different, uh, selection of subject matter over the years. And, um, what I have come to, to learn about the process, which like, is a constant kind of revelation to me in learning about how I think about making art is that um, I, I've come to a point where I understand that I'm using um, imagery as like a narrative tool, um, almost like these images exist as like words in a, in a or, or rather letters to an alphabet. Um, and I'm at, that I'm that I'm putting together. So for me, it's been really good to have a different selection of subject matter, just because it's allowed a constant practicing of uh, working and making art. Um, and so much of of the process of making art for for me has been exploring tools and materials, um, while also uh, uh, becoming more skillful in, in my actual art making ability. Uh, and one of those main things is uh, versatility um, and also spontaneity. Um, being able to uh, learn and make decisions in, 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 in real time. And in that way, it, it kind of... Uh, you know, when I think about it, I think about it as like a form of sculpting. Um, and this process of drawing with two hands is one that I really enjoy um, just because it, uh, it's like an activation of a hand that I usually use all the time to hold another tool or to make art, but rarely have I, have I found myself like drawing with it so um as i've as i've made more art and get more familiar with uh uh the shapes of my subject matter um it becomes quite the tool to be ambidextrous and, and be able to spray paint with both hands you essentially use every tool with both hands um because there's some some really interesting nuances to the to the creative process that I've learned over the years, um, one of which being that quantity or multitude of tools becomes its own tool. Um, an example of that is, yes, I'm using, if I was gonna be painting with a paintbrush in one hand, um, I'm using a paintbrush. Um, if I have uh, 
if I'm able to hold uh, two paint brushes and a palette knife, that becomes its own complete um, different workflow. So, so much of art is, yeah, you're practicing with tools and materials, but it's also exploring the varieties of, of layering workflows, which, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty infinite in that way. And it's, it's definitely something that I enjoy uh, diving into um, each day and just practicing. And I encourage everyone who's, you know, on their creative journey, um, so to say, to not be so product focused or like, uh, it's about the thing being made as much as it is about like the process which makes the thing that's made. Um, I'm very much just a, a student um, in, and uh, celebrator of, of the process of making art. And it reveals these uh, really uh, beautiful things that uh, many of which like are super transferable to other aspects of life. Um, an example of that is, you know, I've, I've had people see me draw with, with both hands and like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. And one of the, the most powerful things that uh, the creative practice has, has taught me over the years is you can easily become what you speak. And that doesn't mean that it doesn't take practice and trying. Um, it just means that the same amount of practice that goes into saying you can't do something can be put into, you know, saying that you can and reinforcing that by uh, participation. So as I... Uh, work through just different pieces of, of subject matter. Like right now, there, there's so many different pieces that I'm, that I'm working on in the studio, but the tool that I'm focused on exploring is this particular workflow, meaning this particular brush w uh, held on this particular palette um, with the paint at this particular viscosity, meaning like thickness. So uh, all these variables um, are what are at play. And then there's some variables at play um, that are, are non-physical, um, like, uh, like harnessing emotions of how I'm feeling, um, or, or rather harnessing emotions that can, that carry a visual energy to them. Um, and that's, the, that's another awesome thing about, about the art making process is learning the language of your unique expression. Like I know what, um, powerful brush strokes look like for me. Um, I know what smooth and calm looks like and how that's translated. Um, and at, at this point, it's fun just to have a, uh, a wide variety of just subject matter to, to bounce around on. Um, and You know, as you can see, the, the work setups in these carts and these, these just different forms of organizing, um, the, 
the deeper I get into exploring my own creative process, uh, just the, the more I continue to just uncover new levels of like organization and like preparation, which um, when I first started, it, you know, it's really, 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 really um, easy and um, in a way kind of logical to, because you don't have a process yet, right? You haven't discovered that. So it can't really be about that, what, which you just don't know at all. So um, it's very like, all right, I'm trying to accomplish making this painting. And the more that you do that, it leads into, oh, wow, like I have a process to do this. And then it leads into, oh, man, there's a way of just exploring all the different ways that a process can exist to have this happen. So um, I had this one uh, older artist tell me one time, um, just this really, uh, I mean, at the time, it was this really annoying thing that he said, but it was, it was so true. And it was something that I, I just couldn't, you know, understand at the time and he knew I couldn't and he told me that and that was one reason why I was like uh um but he uh, uh and this guy he had been an artist for like 40 years you know working all over the world and um and, and he tells me he was like he was like Baron like he's like you need to stop trying to make great art and <laughs> you know I'm like what do you what the heck do you mean by that stop trying to make great art that's crazy and uh and he, and he goes on to say, he's like, you're not even capable of doing it right now. He's like, it's not possible. And of course, like, this just doesn't sit well with me because, you know, at this, at this uh, point in time, enough time just hadn't passed for me to understand what he was saying. And he goes on to say, he says, look, man, he goes, it takes time for time to pass. Um, he said, the best thing that you can do is just keep showing up the way you're showing up. And if you do that, you'll be a great artist. And he's like, you're not gonna understand what I'm saying right now. He's like, but when you're around 35 years old, like, that's what we say, he's like, it's like, he's like, you, got, you gotta have like at least 10, 15 years under your belt before you can even start thinking about making any art that you're really excited about. And, you know, 10 years later and a lot of hours put in, like I, he's totally, he's totally correct. Um, it, it's not so much about having just uh, an idea or even knowing how to just execute that, um, but like the, the real filter that the art's being made from is life experience happening as you are practicing the ways of expression, and that just takes time. It takes time to um, learn the nuances of your preference of tools and, and how that feels. It takes time uh, to develop um, the uh, the lack of trying, um, where you can just let the the tool work and you can just you know, be a, an observer and, and a student of what's happening and learn. Um, because when you start out, it's, it's, it's just very much that you feel as if it must be you that does it. And while that's very true in a way that you have to show up and you have to participate, if you always have a vision in your mind of what you're trying to accomplish, um, the best case scenario is the worst case scenario, which is just like you learn how to, how to do that and you don't learn past that. So um, in, this, in this, as you see like these spontaneous uh, brush strokes, um, that's a good example of, of that is, um, you know, I'm still working within the principles of, of this workflow, but I'm totally just exploring, 
you know, these spontaneous movements and, and what feels right or what I, I, what marks I, I am observing, um, in real time, uh, are exciting to me. Uh, so from like a zoomed out viewpoint of like a work session, you know, I, I encourage uh, every artist I talk to to get a, a body of work going. And, and mainly this is younger artists because just artists that have been working, like they've, they just have this. They have like a body of work that's been traveling through life with them that they're currently working on, but also stuff from years past. And um, I often describe, uh, for me, painting as as like a way of like visual journaling each day, um, and leaving like this little roadmap for me to pick back up and, and resume the conversation. Uh, as, as time, as time unfolds. Um, so it's, you know, in this, over this time, you've seen me jump around to a lot of different paintings, mainly with one tool. Um, so just considering that, you know, like if you're working on one painting, the, the traffic jam of ideas and, uh, and, and that can block being spontaneous can add up real quick if you're just working on one singular piece. Um, but if you're, if you're jumping around and you're able to say, oh man, I like this mark, how, how do I apply what I learned to this over here? And then you learn something new and you take it to another painting, um, it, it becomes a... Uh, uh, for me, that's that's how I learned for it just to become a much more um, fun process uh, as opposed to I'm just trying to accomplish something. Um, so again, like the process is is uh, is is heavily uh, explorative. And uh, so like these strokes right now, you know, this is, there's, there's also such thing as like getting warmed up, you know, like organizing your workflow in a way that, um, and this doesn't have to be super, uh, thought out. I mean, in a way it's also spontaneous in real time as you're selecting tools and observing the work that is out or the things that you're working on. Um, One of the things that I, I, I remind myself, there's, there's two things I remind myself pretty much before starting any work session. Um, the first thing is that while I dive into this, I'm fully here and, and time doesn't exist the same way. Um, the, the second thing is I'm the the maker and the destroyer of all the rules. Meaning that doing something one way can be absolutely the best way to do it. And then in another moment, it's not. And this is a, uh, a, a helpful way to look at it when you are exploring different tools that make different shapes um, but there's also all these different variables that are, that are happening. And, um, so, so even when I, when I use the word process, what I, what I'm talking about is like <laughs> the process of like anti-process of, uh, showing up consistently with the mindset of, of exploring, um, and exploring with, with a, with a, a, a balanced 
amount of intentionality, um, but also uh, just uh, devotion to the practice. Um, that you know, you 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 show up because that's because nothing. That's what. If at one point I uh, in in my you know my perspectives on this totally change over time. Um, It's, I've known a lot of artists that, that go through this, uh, interesting, like, like, uh, psychological gauntlet of imposter syndrome, um, of like, am I an artist? Am I, what do I say that? Like, like, man, if people ask, I'm like, ah. And I guess the funny part of it is like when I'm in the process of like painting and in it, absolutely, I'd never even have enough space for me to even be aware of like me thinking, am I an artist? What's happening is happening. I'm there for it. I'm learning. I'm participating. That's what it is. Um, I do that fairly consistently, um, meaning for the most part each day. Uh, so for a good chunk of each day, um, I never have to think about, am I an artist at all? One of the things I really love about uh, uh, the, the creative practices I've discovered it for myself up to this point is um, how Words can't describe or even get close to describing a lot of things that, that happen while this process is happening. And in many ways, that's what this, what the creative practice is. It's, it's, uh, it's your own personal language that you get to speak to yourself and and, and share with other people and it, and it can be, it can be understood and, um, and it can be understood in a way that, uh, doesn't, uh, require words and it can be understood on a, on a deeply personal level to another human, um, in which way they, they, they feel and contemplate and think or are encouraged or inspired. And, um, that's, that's, that can be beyond, beyond words. And, um, I think that's, I think that's really cool. And it's a really, a really cool thing about, about visual art. And, uh, and just the, the process. So right now I'm practicing some line work. Um, depending on what brush I'm using and what the, the several variables, the, the consistency of the paint um, and just the intention of how I'm practicing holding the brush, uh, 
I'll, I'll hold the brush completely different. Um, uh, usually I, uh, my, my, my preference, uh, just because I, I feel that it gives me more room for being spontaneous with movements and deliberative and deliberate with like brush strokes is that I don't hold the brush, uh, even as close as I'm holding it now. I'll hold it like almost like the top of the brush in the palm of my hand, like it's uh, like a, like a, like a conductor wand or wizard wand or something like that. And uh, so um, these will be the little things I'll point out as, as we dive in. Um, like right now uh, it's, um, Like painting with a brush specifically, it, it can get really, easy to do the same thing every time, to just put paint on the canvas the same way every time. But the brush has, has so many different uh, expressions to it, depending on, uh, you know, the, the pressure, the speed, um, like right there, you know, like scratching in with the back end of the brush and using these heavy body paints, like gives like these layers and texture. So with every tool, this brings to like a good thing to chat about with every tool. Um, like if you look at a brush, like the, the bristles of the brush, that's not what the tool is. The whole object is the tool. And the whole object is a tool to be explored within a workflow. Um, for the reason being that like you understanding skillfully, the more options you have, um, it, it gives more, uh, well, it actually, it, it, it creates less required decision-making because you have more options to be spontaneous with in real time. So when I explore a tool, um, and lately I've just been making a bunch of my own tools. Um, but when I explore a tool, uh, that's how I think about it. Um, I think about it in the ways of what all does this object allow? Um, and in what ways, uh, does it like, does, does it have its strengths? Um, how does this naturally feel for me? Um, and so much of like the, the process of like, um, here's another, here's another question I get, I get asked pretty often. It's, um, where, uh, like, how did you find your style? And a totally valid question. Um, but the, usually the, the response to that is that it would be really hard to notice someone having a style if they only had a couple paintings. So like what people are observing is like this consistent style also comes from volume of work. And, you know, in that there's, there's a, a very simple answer of, of how, of how that happens and how one can discover what their style is, is over time you, you, you show up and you make a bunch of art and, and it, with an awareness of certain tools and ways of making art naturally are more interesting to the individual. Um, and from that, like, this is like this, this thing that, uh, uh, brings encouragement to continue exploring. Um, but I think ultimately what that leads to is just a curiosity of, of simply things that, that just haven't been tried yet. And, um, at, at this point in my career, this is, uh, you know, where I, can understand the truth and what, um, in what that, that older artist told me 
where it, he's just like, it just takes time. It takes time to get to the point where, um, your curiosity for learning new things becomes the art form. And you know, like when you start out, like it's, it's your, like pretty much like I, like what I've, what I found in my personal experience is that the majority of what this, what this practice has showed me is just the ways that I'm stupid. Like specifically meaning the ways that I'm thinking about things um, with a with a shallowness um, of investigation um, from the standpoint of the process, from the standpoint of like my own capability, um, and. And you fight with that because it's it's frustrating for you know early on because you you want to be great you want to make masterpieces you want to uh, uh, be an artist um, but at least for me over time like I've come to fall in love with like just the truth that like hey man I'm cool with being completely wrong about how I'm thinking about doing something um, and and learning uh, and I, I think is like you, you navigate this, this spectrum of attitude towards um, discovery of better ways that require you to reevaluate. You know, when you, you, when you begin to hit the point of like, that's exciting and uh, you're really curious about it. The the urge just to go try all sorts of new things just becomes very strong. Like, like you know, the next thing that uh, that I'm that I'm diving into and that I've been exploring is like sculpting. And what's what's really awesome about like the curiosity of being able to learn. A new uh, a new thing is that you can you can I've learned that you can get to the point of of learning a lot without even having to try it at all first. I mean you still have to like show up and do it. But there's like a preparation to having intentionality about exploring a new discipline. Um, and this is exactly what uh, uh, Neil, which is the older artist who gave me this advice, Neil was speaking to is like, you know, as a decade passes, like these are like the, the repetitions of being an artist that like become the, the tool eventually, um, which is learning how you learn, being able to both like how you learn and see how it's like broken, um, build on the parts that uh, are your strengths you know, not be afraid of the things that are like, that, that, that uh, aren't as interesting, but still explore them in a, in a way that you know You're, you're using those as a tool as well. And one of those, an example of that within my own process would be um, I don't prefer to work on singular pieces of artwork that require tedious steps. Um, but that same... process 
I've taken and I've made it a strength by just applying it to a very uh, large version of the work process where the big scale of the work process is learning how to be uh, tedious about um, working on multiple pieces at a time. So uh, we'll wrap this one up, but that was, uh, this is going to be fun. I'm excited about doing these.